This course is Derivative Securities. My name is Kirby Arkundiv. I have a PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm a chartered financial analyst and a certified financial planner. I currently work as a chief economist. I'm also an adjunct professor of accounting and financial management. In this video, we will cover the mechanics of options markets out of the excellent text Options, Futures, and Other Derivatives by John C. Hall. What are options? Well, options come in two major types. A call option is an option to buy an underlying security for some set price for some set time. A put option is an option to sell an underlying security for some set price for some set time. A European option can be exercised only at the expiration of its life, whereas an American option can be exercised at any time, although in many cases we will find it is not advantageous to exercise it until the end of its life. You can have a long call, in which case you have bought the right to buy the underlying for some set price for some set time. You could own a long put in which case you have purchased the option to sell an underlying security for a set price for a set time. Or you can have a short call, in which case you sold somebody else the right to buy the underlying security for a set price for a set time. Um, the purchaser of the call and the put will pay those who are short um, the right to buy or sell the underlying security. So sort of those that have sold short calls and short puts act like insurance companies, and those who have purchased them, those who are long, act like the purchasers of insurance. Then the short put is the case of somebody who has sold somebody else the right to sell a underlying security for a set price for a set time. Here is an example of the profits for owning a long call. It's the profit from buying one European call option for a price of $5 at a strike price of $100, say the option life is two months, and this profit would be the profit at the end of the option's life for exercising it. So if you go along a call, you're going to pay $5 for that right, just like you would pay $5 for an insurance company. And we can look at the profit equation down here. The profit is going to equal minus what you pay for it, plus a maximum of S minus K comma zero, where K is the strike price, and S is the price of the option on its expiration date. In this example, you're paying $5, and that strike price is 100 so if the option expires when the stock price is 100 right here, you will have lost your $5 you paid for it. That would be an at-the-money call. And for any stock price below that $100, you will have lost your $5. If, on the other hand, the stock price is above the strike price, then you will make S minus 100 minus 5. Your break-even point right here will be when the stock price is $105, and then above that, you will make a profit. The profit for owning a call can be infinite, since the stock price can be infinite. Therefore, the profit maximum loss for owning a call is the minus $5. Short call is going to be the opposite. You act like the insurance company, you get paid the 5 bucks. You break even again at 105, but shorting a naked call, meaning selling calls on a stock or underlying you don't own, is highly risky because the potential loss is infinite. Therefore, most people who sell calls own the underlying stock. Long put looks like this. The profit from buying a put is minus P0, the price you pay for the purchase of the put plus the maximum of K, the strike price, minus the stock price, comma, zero. Under this example, you're paying $7 for the put, and you get paid off a maximum of 70 minus S, comma, zero, since 70 is the strike price. 
So the maximum here you're going to lose is the $7 you buy for it. Your break even is going to be right here. So we would set profit equal to zero. We would solve for S and we would get 70 minus seven or your break even point here is $63. Your maximum profit would be when the stock goes bankrupt, S goes to zero, and then the profit is going to be 70 minus seven are also $63. Shorting a put, selling somebody else the right to sell you the stock, in this case at 70. Your maximum profit will be here at $7. Um, your break even is going to be here again at 63. And your maximum loss is going to be, again, in this case, 7 minus 70, our maximum loss of $63. So the profit from selling the put, again, you get paid the premium, sort of like an insurance company, and then you have to pay out if the equivalent of them wrecking the car takes place, and that in this case is the stock price is less than 70, and then you have to pay out on this option. Here we show the payoffs from various option positions, and you can identify them again here. Um, this is ignoring the uh, price you pay for it, so this is not a profit. This is the payoff at the end, and this is going to be the long call, and then the opposite of that would be the short call, and this would be the long put, and the opposite of that would be the short put. Um, calls and puts can be written on a large variety of underlying securities. Stocks, IBM, Apple, etc., ETFs or exchange traded funds like the S&P 500, um, uh, a whole variety of different exchange traded funds. Uh, VBR would be a small cap value, for example, SPY and S&P 500. Uh, VTV, large cap value. There's tons of them out there, and there are other exchange traded products just beyond uh, exchange traded funds. Foreign currencies, um, certainly these can be used to hedge for companies working over the world and making profits in different currencies. They can also be used to speculate, uh, depending on which way you think a foreign currency is going to move relative to the dollar. Stock indices like the S&P 500, the Dow, Jones Industrial Average, and the NASDAQ. And then there are options on futures, so you could buy options on a cattle future, for example. The specifications of the exchange traded options would be the expiration date. And again, in many ways, these resemble insurance products. So you could buy insurance for six months for a year. That would be the expiration date. The strike price, which we have shown is the price you get to buy or sell the underlying uh, European or American. Again, European options you can only exercise on the day of expiration. Americans you can exercise any time up to the day of expiration. And then the option class, whether it is a call giving you the right to buy or a put giving you the right to sell. Moneyness at the money means the stock price equals the strike price. In the money would be dependent on whether it is a call or a put, but it would mean that maximum S minus X for a call is positive or S is greater than X for a call. Or for a put, the maximum of X minus S is positive are meaning the stock price is less than the strike price for a put. That would be an in the money option. Out the money option is when the uh, zero factor, the maximum in that is zero, and that would be the case in which the um, buyer is going to lose and the seller is going to make their premium that they sold it for. So in the money, the options would be exercised at the day of expiration out of the money they would not. More on terminology, option class would be calls or puts listed on the same underlying security. So all of the calls or puts, for example, on SPY, um, an ETF covering the S&P 500. Whereas an option series would be all calls or puts that expire during the same month, say November. The intrinsic value is going to be either zero 
our s minus x for a call, our 0, our x minus s for a put. So if s is greater than x, the call option is in the money, and it has a positive intrinsic value. If s is less than x, the call option is worth 0 and has a 0 intrinsic value. If s is less than x, the put option has a positive intrinsic value and is in the money. If s is greater than x, the put option has a value, intrinsic value of 0 and is out of the money. The total value of a call option is going to be the intrinsic value plus a time value. So the time value gradually decreases as you approach the expiration date. And on the expiration date, the call option is only worth its intrinsic value. Same with the put option, except you have x minus s. This is the intrinsic value. This is the time value, which gradually goes to 0 on the day of expiration. And the total value of the put is the intrinsic value plus the time value. Here is a list from E-Trade of options traded on SPY, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So in this case, we show the options as a function of strike price, the price at which calls get to purchase and puts get to sell. So an in-the-money call would be one for which the strike price is below the current stock price. So these options here would be in the money calls, shown in blue, and these options here would be in the money puts, because for a put, you want the current stock price to be less than the strike price. So if we look at the prices here, um, we have a bid-ask spread and we have the last price. We would show that for call options, as the strike price goes up, the price of the option goes down, whereas for put options, as the strike price goes up, then you get to sell it at a higher price, so the price of the option goes up. So this is the price for calls you get to buy. You want to buy as low as possible, and this is the price for puts you get to sell. You want to sell for as high as possible. You can also see the bid-ask spread here for each of these options. We can also present the data off E-Trade as a function of expiration month. So in this example, again, the SPY is currently trading at 430, and we have picked out the strike price of 430. So all of these call options um, are allowed to buy at 430, sell it slightly above that. So all of the call options are in the money, therefore in blue. All of the put options are just slightly out of the money, therefore in white. And here we have the expiration month, or the expiration day, gradually increasing November, December, January as we go towards the bottom. So again, options are sort of like insurance, you're going to pay more for insurance for a year than for six months for one month. So as the expiration month increases, we would expect the values of both calls and puts to increase, which is what you see here. The prices for the calls increase as you go from top to bottom, and the prices of the puts increase as you go from top to bottom. Other CBOE, or Chicago Board Options Exchange products, include Flex Options, which are options customized by the buyer and the seller, rather than just having the set um, strike price and time to expiration on the exchange. Weeklies, which are options that only last eight days and expire every Friday, rather than only once a month, like the regular options. Binary options, which pay a fixed monetary amount, are nothing, rather than uh, changing with S minus X, like the regular options. Credit event binary options, which are sort of like credit default swaps, they pay out if the credit event occurs, R pay nothing. And doom options, which are deep out of the money put options, which are also sort of an alternative to credit default swaps. 
Another issue that needs to be addressed when discussing options is how options are affected by dividends and stock splits. Suppose you own N options with a strike price K, so you control big N times big K amount of money and options. No adjustments are made to the option terms for a cash dividend, but when there is an N for M stock split, the strike price is reduced to little m big K divided by M here, and the number of options is increased to little n big N over M here. So this is the new N prime, and this is the new K prime. Overall, you can see the N's cancel out and the M's cancel out, so the total dollar amount controlled does not change any, merely the number of options goes up and the strike price goes down. If we consider a call option to buy 100 shares for $20 a share and ask how should terms be adjusted first for a two-for-one stock split, well K prime, the new strike price, is going to be, since it is a two-for-one stock split, 1 times 20 divided by 2 are $10, so the strike price goes down to $10, and the number of shares will be 2 times 100 divided by 1 are 200. So before the stock split takes place, the investor controls 100 times $20 are $2,000, and afterwards the investor controls $10 times 200 are $2,000. How about for a 5% stock dividend, in which case the new strike price is going to be 1 times 20 divided by 1.05, are $19.05, and the number of shares is going to be 1.05 times 100, or 105 shares, and again, the amount controlled before and after the adjustment will be the same, 100 times 20 is 2,000, 105 times 19.05 is 2000. Market makers, well most exchanges use market makers to facilitate options trading and a market maker will quote both a bid and an ask price when requested as we showed earlier on the E-Trade slides. You had both a bid and an ask spread for calls and puts and the market maker will make money by selling higher and buying lower just like any other sort of a middleman. The market maker does not know whether the individual requesting the quotes wants to buy or sell. If you invest in options, well, the Chicago Board Options Exchange is going to require a margin because they don't want to lose money. If you default, when a naked option is written, the margin is the greater of a total of 100% of the proceeds of the sale price plus 20% of the underlying share price less the amount, if any, by which the option is out of the money, or a total of 100% of the proceeds of the sale uh, price plus 10% of the underlying share price call or exercise price put. For other trading strategies, there are special rules and also uh, margins can be adjusted um, on particular stocks depending on the riskiness of that stock. Warrants are a sort of a type of option. They're options that are issued by a corporation or financial institution. So most of the options we've discussed, calls or puts, are just created by investors in the market. And you or I could create options on IBM, but only IBM could create a warrant on IBM. The number of warrants outstanding is determined by the size of the original issue and changes only when they're exercised or when they expire. Uh, the issuer, in our example, IBM, settles up with the holder when a warrant is exercised. When call warrants are issued by a corporation on its own stock, exercise will usually lead to new treasury stock being issued. So the company itself will sell more of the underlying stock rather than be traded from one investor to another. Uh, another type of option is an employee stock option, generally given as incentives for the employees to do well and get the stock price up. Employee stock options are a form of remuneration issued by a company to its executives. They align 
the interest of investors in the company with the top management, and both of them want the stock price to go up. They're usually at the money when issued, and when options are exercised, the company issues more stock and sells it to the option holder for the strike price, and these have to be expensed on the income statement of the company. Other option type products include convertible bonds and convertible preferred stocks. Convertible bonds are regular bonds that can be exchanged for equity in the company at certain times in the future according to a predetermined exchange ratio. So they give the investor the advantages of interest from bonds and somewhat of a participation in the equity of the company if the stock really takes off. Usually a convertible is callable uh, the call provision is a way in which the issuer can force conversion at a time earlier than the holder might otherwise choose. In the past, Warren Buffett has been a big fan of convertible preferred stock. I thank you for watching this video.